Most people think finance professionals spend hours each day creating complex Excel formulas. And this was true for a long time, but AI changed everything. Today, with tools like ChatGPT, you can now build robust, error-free financial models in less than 30 minutes. So in today's video, I'll build a real Excel model for FP&A using AI, breaking down each step of the process. This is the same framework that's helping finance teams save hours of work while creating more accurate models. So let's dive in. Here's the context. You're a finance manager at a software company. Your CFO asks you to create a weekly pacing model that calculates how the business is doing versus its monthly goal. The model must be as automated as possible and allow for on-the-fly changes to dates so we can compare different scenarios. This is a critical project and you want to build something robust and professional. You want to use AI to help you structure and build this model efficiently. So let me walk you through the model we are going to build and then we'll look at the prompt for ChatGPT. So our goal is to build a weekly pacing model that takes monthly forecasts and compares that to the actuals we have achieved until a certain date in the month. So what we have here is a simple PL from revenue over gross profit, marketing expenses, journal and administrative costs, all the way to operating income. And then we have the monthly forecast already given from January through December. So for example, 111,000 is the revenue we forecast for the month of January. And then down here, we track daily actuals. So each day we get an, another column here with actual results. And so for example, on January 1st, we had a revenue of 3,438. And then down here, this is the model we we are building now together. And the idea is that we have the actual summed up up to a given date. Then we have the corresponding forecast for this month displayed here. We compare actuals to forecast and then we calculate the percentage of actuals that have already been achieved as a percent of the monthly goal. And then we compare that to how much time has already passed. And then we can use this to interpret company performance and how we're doing against the January forecast. For example, if half of the month has already passed, but we only realized a third of the revenue, then probably there is an issue and we have to do something to catch up. So here's the prompt we'll start with. I'm a finance manager at a software company. I need to build a weekly pacing report in Excel. The model should help us analyze how actual results are tracking against our monthly forecast. I need your help with writing the Excel formulas. Please provide formulas I can paste directly into Excel with short explanations of how each component of the formula works. Ensure that the formulas used are as simple as possible, making them easier to audit and verify that they exactly fulfill the intended purpose. This is a high visibility project that was given to me and I would like to impress our chief financial officer. I don't work with them often and I want this model to help me differentiate myself from other analysts by making it as robust, user-friendly and automated as possible. I have actual revenue by day in row 22. The first formula I need your help with should sum up the actual revenue up to a date specified in cell E35. I need to be able to change this date and the model automatically shows the corresponding sum of actual sales in cell F38. Okay, before we move forward with pasting this prompt into ChatGPT, I want to break down why I wrote the prompt the way I did. You can apply the structure to any prompt for any AI. Chatbot doesn't have to be ChatGPT. We start with providing the goal with context. That's the part where I say I'm a finance manager at a software company and I need to build a weekly pacing report in Excel. The model should help us analyze how actual results are tracking against our monthly forecast. See how specific I am there. Then, you need to specify the return format. I need your help with writing the Excel formulas. Please provide formulas I can paste directly into Excel, etc. Then you should also include warnings to make sure that the output the chatbot gives you is exactly what you're looking for. So I say, ensure that the formulas used are as simple as possible, make them easier to audit and verify that they exactly fulfill the intended 
purpose. And then I recommend that you do something that maybe you haven't done before when you're prompting AI, but it can make a big difference, especially as these tools become more and more powerful. And that is to provide a context dump. This is the part where I say, this is a high visibility project that was given to me and I would like to impress our chief financial officer and so on. This context dump helps give the AI more background and makes it so that it can tailor its answers exactly to what you're looking for. And with that done, I can provide the first task. That's where I say I have actual revenue by day in row 22. The first formula I need to help with should sum up the actual revenue and so on. First, start by telling AI what I have already have, where it's located in the Excel sheet and where the cell with the date is, because that way the formula gives me exactly what I need and I can just copy paste. Now, this prompting framework comes from Greg Brockman. He's the co-founder of OpenAI, the company behind chat GPT. You notice that the prompt is fairly detailed and that's crucial. When I train corporate finance teams and they ask me to help with a complex formula, I don't teach Excel anymore. Instead, I ask them to ask their AI chatbot of choice and then I help them with crafting the prompt. While most finance teams have access to a company sanctioned AI tool now, people are still struggling with prompts. The mistake I most often see is that they treat AI like a traditional search engine, they input three or four words, and then they are surprised that the output produced by AI is subpar. But if you follow this prompting framework, you will see the immense capabilities these tools already have. Before we hop into ChatGPT and build out our model in Excel, if you want to take your FP&A skills to the next level, I'm currently giving away my 10 most popular one-pager infographics for free. These contain my best frameworks and strategies for finance pros, so click that first link below to get them for free. Now let me show you how to create the actual model using ChatGPT and Excel. Okay, so now we are in ChatGPT, but this works with any of the modern chatbots. So whether that's Microsoft Copilot, Gemini from Google, Claude from Anthropic, or Grok from XAI, this will work similarly. I'll paste the prompt here and then let's see what we get, okay? So it gives me the formula and then it outlines an explanation of how the different components of the formula works. And it gives me, you know, a reasoning for why it shows that formula. So let's see if it works. I'll copy this, clicking on copy here and bring it into the Excel model. So now I paste it here in the cell and let's see, this looks good. So if I click in the formula cell or click F2, I can see what it's doing. So it's pulling revenue here from the daily actuals, it gives me the dates, it links to the cell, and it gives me, is the, is the sum correct? Yes, it's 47,498, the same number we have here because this is, this is summing this up. So this seems to be correct. Let's check if we can also change the date here and the number changes. So let's change this to January 11th. Okay, it gives us a different number. That's good. Let's see if the number is correct. Yes, 42,862. So that's the formula. And now I can take this formula and copy it down. First, I have to fix the cell references by using F4. Okay, and now I can copy it down. If you have any questions about how I'm doing any of these steps, by the way, you can also ask that question to ChatGPT. But for now, I'm just building out this PL. Gross margin is revenue minus cost of goods sold divided by revenue. Gross profit, take revenue less cost of goods sold. Then we do the ratios as a percentage. And my operating income is gross profit minus marketing expenses and general and administrative cost. Okay, so now we want to calculate the forecast according to the date that we have here. Let me set that to uh, the date that we had there before. And for that, we use a different prompt. 
So now we don't need to explain and provide all the background anymore because ChatGPT already um, knows what it needs to do and what we're looking for. So we can jump straight to explaining what we want. So I'm pasting this here. I like to start with giving it quick feedback just so it knows that we want the next output to be similar to how it did it before. So just say perfect. And then they say, I have forecasted revenue by month in row six, with January in column F. The month labels are in row five. The second formula should look up the monthly forecast according to the current month, which is indicated by date in cell 35. I need to be able to change the state and the model automatically shows the corresponding forecast in cell G38. Let's see what we're getting here. Okay, so now here it made a few assumptions and actually i really like that the assumptions are spelled out here and it assumed that the month in row five is labeled as gen feb march etc not full names like january but actually that's not the case so if we go back to the excel model we see that in row five the month is actually uh, provided as a number so let's go back and ask it to make that correction actually the month in row five is provided as a number. So for example, one is for January, two is for February and so on. So now it updates the formula and now it aligns with how the model is set up. So we can now again take this and paste it into Excel. Of course, when you do this at home, I recommend you also go through the explanation because ideally you'll learn something um, from the AI while you do this. So now we copy the formula and we bring it over into our Excel model. Okay, 111,373. Does it pick up the right rows? It does. Let's compare it to what we have here. Yes, the January number is correct. Let's change that to a date in uh, February, for example. Does it pick up the correct number? It does. Okay, so let's change it back to January. Now we can do the same thing. We add the fixed cell references here so we can copy paste this down. And then we can take the other calculations from the actual column because they are the same. Okay, so now actuals versus forecast is straightforward. We just subtract one from the other. So we see the, the difference here. And then we can also calculate actuals as a percent of the forecast. That's also super straightforward. We don't need the uh, AI support here, that's a simple formula. And copy that down to the relevant cells. And now we can compare how much time has passed. So this is where it gets interesting because we want to compare how much time has passed in the month up to that date to how much have we already incurred as in terms of revenue or how much we have already spent in terms of expenses. And this formula is tricky, right? People, when I teach this, people often struggle to come up with how this formula works. So let's ask AI to help us with that again. And the prompt I would use for this is next formula cell j38 should calculate the time elapsed in a given month up to the date in cell e35 displayed as a percentage let's see what we get so it gives us a formula here and here it i definitely recommend you know reading the explanation to see how it works because it's not super straightforward but let's see if this works Okay, it calculated 39%. Let's double check if this is actually correct. January has 31 days, so we can say 12 divided by 31 is 38.7. Is it 38.7? It is. So this is how you build a model quickly in Excel using ChatGPT. The next step here would be to interpret the numbers. How is the company doing against the January forecast? Well, we're tracking slightly ahead in terms of revenue. That's where you compare those two metrics. Um, we are a bit behind when it comes to marketing expenses, but that could simply be phasing. We might be spending the money later in the month, but that you learn the most from a pacing 
model like this when you look at revenue. Okay, so that's exactly how you can use AI to build robust Excel models much faster. Now, as I mentioned before, I'm currently giving away my top 10 FPNA infographics for free. You can click the first link in the description to get them. And if you do, you'll also join my newsletter where I share actionable FPNA tips and strategies every single week. So click the link below to get all that completely for free. And if you want to learn the new way to create financial presentations, then watch this video next.